Okay, so finally, we're going to get past the Bachmann Howard ordinal, which is psi epsilon sub omega plus 1. And to do that, we're going to have to denote a new psi function and call it psi 1 of uh, some a. And this corresponds to another set, s, we'll call it s1, is equal to uh, all the usual elements, so 0, 1, omega, capital omega, and now capital omega 1. So when this function here gets stuck, we're going to need a new countable large ordinal to bail us out. And that's where this uh, capital omega 1 comes in. So the first element in this new psi function, we're going to call psi 1 of 0. And this will be equivalent to epsilon sub omega plus 1. And remember, this here isn't the bachmann howard ordinal because it's not inside this psi function. If we want to write this, we have to do psi, psi 1 of 0 is equal to the bachmann howard ordinal. Now to go further, it's a, a simple step of plugging this into a new set and then finding what the inaccessible point would be, which is simply an infinite tower of these guys here, which we know to be the next epsilon number, which is epsilon sub omega plus 2. And we call this psi 1 of 1, which is the next psi function, equal to epsilon sub omega plus 2. And we could even say in general that psi 1 of a is equal to epsilon sub omega plus 1 plus a. And this uh, factor of plus 1 comes just because this whole thing has shifted over. We have 0, and we end up getting a plus 1, 1, a plus 2. So very, very simple, but that's, that's the reason why. And what we find, basically, is similar to the previous psi function, we're able to plug in finite nestings of epsilons, but never an infinite nesting of epsilons. So this function gets stuck, once again, at a zeta, but this time, it gets stuck at the first zeta number after omega. And then we plug this guy in here to get past that uh, sticking point, basically. And we can say, in general, that psi 1 of omega 1 times a is equal to zeta omega plus 1 plus a. Another point of interest would be psi 1 omega 1 squared is equal to the first eta naught after omega. Psi 1 omega 1 of a would be phi a plus 1 of omega plus 1. So basically we're hitting all the same points we did before. This function gets stuck in every point that it did before, except now we're constructing omegas here. That's the only difference, basically. And we can keep on going, basically. So let's uh, let's write a few more out. I mean, they're, they're going to be the same as uh, as the previous psi function, but um, you guys could probably figure this out on your own, but um, I'll still do it. Um, omega to the omega would be uh, the first gamma, gamma number after omega. And eventually, this uh, function is going to get stuck permanently, just like it did with the uh, Bachmann-Howard ordinal. And this happens at psi 1, epsilon, omega 1 plus 1. And then we can't go any further with this psi 1 function. So now, as you probably guessed, we simply denote psi 2 of 0. And have this equal to epsilon, omega 1 plus 1. And then psi 2 of 1 would simply be epsilon, omega 1 plus 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it follows in the exact same manner, except now we're building um, structures of omega 1. And then this uh, psi 2 function would have its own set S, which would contain uh, everything that it did before. And this time it would contain, let me scroll over a little bit, its own omega 2 function to get it unstuck. So in this manner, we can construct uh, an entire hierarchy of these psi functions, which each have their own corresponding omega function, or sorry, omega ordinal, to get it unstuck. So psi corresponds to omega, psi 1 to omega 1, psi 2 to omega 2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And to, and to sol some uh, arbitrary psi of j corresponds to omega j. So now I'm going to make a, a little remark about uh, notation. When we start plugging these into the fast spring hierarchy and deconstructing them, they're going to get very, very messy uh, for this reason, basically. Let's say we have like phi of uh, 3 of 0. Well, in order to, for this to make sense, basically, we have to um, write it out as follows. We have to have some kind of like a 
ascending order of these phi functions, or sorry, psi functions. So we'd have psi of psi of one, of psi of two, of psi of three. Because if we just have this here, we end up getting, like for, for instance, in this case, we get epsilon sub omega two plus one. So we basically have this um, poorly defined ordinal construction floating out in the middle of space, and it's not inside of a psi function. And this is something that we'll never have to encounter, basically. This right here is meaningless. It doesn't um, equal anything important. In order for this to have meaning, it has to be within a psi function. So for this to make sense, we have to put it in a cascading, uh, sorry, ascending order of these. So each one collapses the next one until we end up with this one, which gives us an actual value. So for this reason, instead of writing all these out, basically, I'm going to say from now on that when we see something like this, all these other ones are going to be implied. So if I want to write down the Bachman Howard ordinal, for instance, uh, before we had to write psi of psi one of zero is equal to blah, 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 Bachman Howard ordinal. So I'm going to say now that it's not necessary to write down this psi here because it's implied because there's never a situation where we won't have to, um, where we won't have um, this here inside of a psi function. So that's kind of a, a simplification or whatever. It'll simplify things immensely, especially when we get into the more complicated examples. So now uh, the next logical step, once we get into an arbitrary um, subscript here of a psi function, is to start injecting infinite ordinals. And we can do that. So we can have something like psi omega of zero. And you could think of this as being the fundamental sequence of psi one of zero, psi two of zero, psi three of zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's nothing stopping us from putting uh, infinite ordinals in the subscript. So now um, we're going to do some examples. Um, actually, you know what? I'll save that for the next video, whatever. I think that's far enough, whatever. That's uh, enough to mull over. So see you next time.